Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've heard a lot about personality tests, specifically at Enneagram, if I'm saying it right. I don't know if I am, sorry if I'm not. This test gives you a number or something and then tells you about your personality, it like describes what you're like, blah blah blah. I've heard a lot of YouTubers that have done this, so I thought I might as well try it out myself because I'm kind of intrigued to see if it's as accurate as, as everybody else is depicting it to be. So let's just get straight into it. I am more sensitive than most people, sometimes the world just seems too harsh. I would say yes. The options are no, partly and yes, so I would say yes. I want to win the approval of those in, author in authority, sometimes even when I don't really like them. I would say yes completely. I tend to trust most people, partly. Um, experiences have kind of toughened me up a bit and made me realise that not everybody is as nice as I think they are. I don't get depressed easily, if at all. I would say no for that one. <laughs> I'm too strict with myself and others, 100%. I think I've turned into such a bitch at work lately, like, all I do is <laughs> moan and shout and bitch and, oh man, and I'm so strict on myself, like, if I start something I have to finish it, like, starting working at Primark, I now feel like I have to go into management and I have to get to the top, otherwise I'm letting myself down for spending all these years dedicated to this job um, and with things like my bedroom this week I've been decorating it and as you can see it's all done now I finally got the stuff up behind me and once I set myself a goal I have to achieve it so yeah I agree with that one I am far too harsh on myself to the point where I make myself stress too much and it's just not good for me okay I stress too much I plan the next adventure before the current one is finished no I wouldn't agree with that I always have to finish what I'm doing like I have to finish whatever it is I'm working on in order to be able to start on something new like if I'm filming a video for example in order to start filming this video I had to finish editing the one that I filmed last night so I can't just abandon a project I love to take care of people and I'm good at it I would say partly I do like taking care of people whether I'm good at it, <laughs> I'm probably not to be honest. Success, prestige and recognition really matter to me, yes completely, 100% I've already explained that. God how long is this? I'm always aware of what needs to be corrected, yes definitely, um, especially with my job, I keep talking about my job but it's like one of the most important things in my life, to be honest I'm always aware of what I can improve on and what I'm struggling with and what my weaknesses are like this sounds like I'm trying to sell myself to a job interview or something but it's true like I have in my mind what I'm bad at right now and what I'm trying to improve on but it's about balance and trying to learn to be strict but also still be a nice supervisor do you know being loud but am I being obnoxiously loud it's like finding a balance in most re close relationships I give more than I take 100% I was thinking about this earlier, I give so much in relationships that people tend to take advantage of me and then I just get used and thrown away and it's happened to me all my life. I pay for people too much, I buy people things, I'll pay for concert tickets and say don't worry don't pay me back because you're my friend and I care about you and I think a big part of that is I just, I just don't ever want anyone to feel like I don't care about them and I'm always thinking in my head like what if this was the last time I saw that person like I have to give them all of myself in order to prove that I care about them so I do give too much and I get used and then throw it away which has happened with friends and family so it's great I am uncomfortable when people want an emotional response from me partly it depends the scenario and the situation and the context I could probably use a little more ambition. Partly, I would say, like I still don't know what I want to truly do with my life, like career-wise, like I know I want to get to manager at Primark, but after that, <sighs> couldn't tell you. So I could use a bit more ambition to actually chase what I want, which is more media-based creativity. Um, I was going to do creative writing and media at uni. That was more driven towards the dream job that I would actually want. It's just I don't know how to actually get there and I don't have the ambition to go to uni now at my age. I was talking about it to my friend earlier, I feel like I'm too old for uni now and stuff. But anyway, I, I don't want to ramble on too much because this video will be far too long. I don't see much point in wallowing in negative emotions 
when I begin to feel anxious I tend to throw myself into distracting activities oh 100% definitely <laughs> it's hard for me to put my feelings aside, aside even to get a job done uh, partly to get a job done I think I'm quite good at putting my feelings aside but after the job's done I'll melt down it's important to me that I be admired by others and many people do admire me partly because I am a youtuber <laughs> YouTuber. I don't mind taking a risk, I really like to beat the odds. <sighs> no, not at all, I don't take any risks in life, I'm too scared. I'm a true romantic, partly because I do fantasise about like romantic shit and stuff, but when it actually comes down to getting into relationships and dating, I always ruin it, or like on purpose I self-sabotage because I'm just, I'm like, oh I'm not ready, or oh they don't like me back, but I self-sabotage a lot in that respect, but I am a romantic so I'll just put partly. I am more organised than most, partly because if you saw the tip of my bedroom a week ago, like it depends on my mental state, I'm either very very organised or the complete opposite end of the scale, like it's very hard. It's easy for me to accept other people when they seem comfortable around me because I don't judge them, oh 100%. I don't want to sound like I'm being cocky or anything but I truly believe that that's true. Okay. Even though it is frequently irrational, I sometimes worry, worry whether people are talking about me behind my back. It's literally me in every situation, so yes. I get bored more easily than most people. I'm always looking for new experiences. I would say yes, completely. I get bored so easily, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna quickly fill out the rest of this because it's 14 pages long and I do not have the camera battery or the patience or time and neither do you. So I will get back to you when I have my results. Okay, so apparently I'm a type 6 and I don't actually know what that means. So I'm gonna look it up right now and see what it means and see if it's accurate. Type 6, the loyalist. Oh. Definitely. I am a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Conflicted between trust and distrust. This is very true, very true. People with this personality type essentially feel insecure as though there is nothing quite steady enough to hold on to. At the core of the type 6 personality is a kind of fear or anxiety. Thank you. This anxiety has a very deep source and can manifest in a variety of different styles making 6s somewhat difficult to describe and to type. I think that's very true. What all sixes have in common, however, is the fear rooted at the centre of their personality which manifests in worrying and restless imaginings of everything that might go wrong. This is very accurate so far. <laughs> this tendency makes sixes gifted at troubleshooting but also robs the six of much needed peace of mind and tends to deprive the personality of sponta spontaneity. This is very true, like sometimes I can be spontaneous like with my hair and stuff but it's very rarely, it's only when I'm feeling at the best. And I do worry too much, I said that before, I worry so much that I've had insomnia in the past and things like that. I get a lot of problems from stress, whenever I go to the doctors they tell me it's because of stress. So worrying is a big issue. Sixes don't trust e easy, easily, they are often amphilaman about others until the person has absolutely proven herself, at which point they are likely to respond with steadfast loyalty. That's true. The loyalty of the six is something of a two-edged sword, however, as sixes are sometimes prone to stand by a friend, partner, job or cause, even long after it is time to move on. Primark. <laughs> That's so true, like I should have moved on from Primark years ago, and I won't because I just want to like once I start something I have to finish it and I'm loyal to Primark now, like I truly am, like I just want to keep being there even though at the back of my mind I'm always thinking everyone else has moved on so I should move on to you and people in my life are always telling me to move on from Primark but I like just cannot do it. So this is scarily true and accurate so this scares me so much because that's completely true. Sixes are genuinely looking for something or someone to believe in. This, combined with their general suspiciousness, gives rise to a complicated relationship to authority. The side of the six is looking for something to believe in, is often, ver is often very susceptible to the temptation to turn authority over to an external source, whether it be the form of an indiv individual or a creed. But the six's tendency towards distrust, distrust and suspicion works against any sort of faith and authority. Thus, two opposite pools exist side by side in the personality of type 6 and assume different proportions in different individuals, sometimes alter alternating within the same individual. Basically, I'm 
bipolar in my personality sometimes. The truly confronting elephant, element elephant, when it comes to type 6s is, is that there are two fundamentally different strategies that 6s adopt for dealing with fear. Some 6s are basically phobic. Phobic 6s are genuinely compliant and cooperative. Other 6s adopt the opposite stra strategy of dealing with fear and become counterphobic is essentially taking a defiant stand against whatever they find threatening. This is the 6 who takes an, on an authority or adopts a daredevil attitude towards physis physical danger. That's definitely not me, like, no. Counterphobic 6s can be aggressive and rather than looking for authorities can adopt a rebellious or anti-authoritarian demeanour. I mean, that's sometimes true in some stages of my life, I guess. Uh, counterphobic sixes are often unaware of the fear that motivates their actions. In fact, sixes in general tend to be blind to the extent of their own anxiety. Mm, I wouldn't say I'm blind to my anxiety, I'd say I'm pretty aware of it. <laughs> because it is a constant backdrop to all their emotions, sixes are frequently unaware of its existence as they have nothing with which to contrast it. I guess I was unaware of it for years until, like, a couple of years ago, so does that count? Because sixes are so frequently fail to appreciate the extent of their own fear, they often mistype themselves. Sixes tend to be practical. I would say that's true. Finally, counterphobic six sixes can easily mistype as eights, but they lack the eights self-certainty. Okay, I don't have much else to say, that's completely true. There are very little things in that that I don't agree with, like... Damn. I thought this was all going to be bullshit because I've seen loads of YouTubers like Dodie Clark and, um, what's the other one? Tessa Violet and other people talking about the Enneagram and they like take it super seriously and they're like, I'm this type and I'm this type. But this actually sounds like me completely, so now I know what I am, so if anybody ever asks me and brings it up in conversation, I know I'm a type 6 and then people can put me in a box where they can fit my personality and figure me out, I guess, even though on here it's saying I could identify as a lot of others, or misidentify, I don't even know. I love the anxiety and worry was the main, the main points, but anyway. That thing about staying in a job too long really hit me hard. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, you can't see it. Well oh, damn. Okay, you can turn on your notifications because I make new videos every Thursday and Sunday. I'll leave a link to the Enneagram test. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, that I took. And you can see what type you are because I think it's quite interesting. That's it. Bye.